So, remember that time you threw a piece of rubbish onto the street? You told yourself, I rarely do this and everybody else does it anyway. It's fine. Even though you looked around to see if anyone else was watching. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but um, no. Everybody does not choose to litter. You're literally convincing yourself of this to sleep better at night. This is Dynamic Science, and today we're going to burst some bubbles and look at a very common psychological phenomenon we all experience. The false consensus effect. One time I tried telling my uncle about how the overuse of air conditioners harm the penguins in Antarctica. I politely educated him on some of the small easy measures that would help reduce the damage overconsumption does to the planet. His reply was no surprise. The go-to phrase people use when told to correct bad habits. Everyone does it, so I can too. And what difference does a single air conditioner make anyway? Now you could blame him for his ignorance, for a while I did. However, that was until I learnt about something we all fall prey to. The false consensus effect, or consensus bias. The word consensus means a generally accepted opinion or agreement between a group of people. So the false consensus effect is the tendency to overestimate how acceptable and prevalent our own behavior, opinions, values, and preferences are in society. It is a cognitive egocentric bias in social perception and attribution processes. Or simplified, it makes us believe that others feel or think the same way we do. In a prominent study by Stanford University, undergraduate students were asked if they would be willing to walk around the campus wearing a sign saying, eat at Joe's. Then, they had to guess the percentage of students that would and would not be willing to carry out the task. 53% of students agreed to walk with the sign and estimated that 65% will be willing to do the same. On the other hand, 47% of students refused to do the task and estimated that 69% would do the same. Now we are left with the question of why are we so wrong at estimations and assumptions? The existence of this trait can be explained by the deep desire to be accepted. A desire that is shared by most. It is biological. We all want to fit into the societal norms that we have been conditioned to and become recognized as part of the group. These are urges brought about thanks to evolution. The great part of human evolution has primarily occurred in small groups, as opposed to mass societies we live in today. So, when making a decision, we think about the members of the groups we already belong, our friends and family. Since these people already share our interests and are thoroughly entwined in our lifestyles, we tend to assume that, like them, most people have the same values and beliefs. And within a group, by default we tend to focus more on those who agree with our opinions. It is always easier to assume that everybody thinks the same way so that we can project our thoughts onto others with less resistance. Gradually, we gravitate towards people who share our point of views. To then overestimate the acceptance of those views. Because in our own tribe, most think the same way. However, the problem is that our sample size is too small for us to see the truth. Especially in today's modernized, technological, overpopulated Earth. No surprise, but most internet platforms run their entire business model with the false consensus effect at the core. Facebook and Instagram's algorithms are designed to put agreeable content on your newsfeed. Google literally analyzes your online and offline activity to personalize advertisements because, and I am preaching to the choir here, you are more likely to share and like the stuff that you agree with. So we continue to be convinced that everybody else agrees with our own perceptions and beliefs, unknowing to the damage that it is creating. The internet 
that we continue to tell ourselves is helping to connect us is actually creating a divide by enhancing the false consensus effect, aiding the separation between communities at home and abroad as we become less tolerant to anything other than our norms. So what can we do to protect our brains from the negative side effects of the false consensus effect? The key is tolerance through mindfulness. When you're confronted with someone who has conflicting beliefs or opinions and you feel like you're being attacked, take a deep breath and remember that this is simply an evolutionary defense that evolved to protect you from predators in the savannah. And that we have moved on from here, even if our biological systems are still lagging a lot. Evolution lacks to take its time. So, while we wait, let's try to look at it from their perspective. Their cultural, family, religious conditioning. Remember that having another perspective is not a negative factor. There is never one way to go about something. It is always relative and you can both be right. Just like different notes create a harmony, diversity creates stronger bonds. So, maybe one day we will not only be able to agree with one another, but begin learning from one another as well. Other than that, there is no magic trick that can help you stay out of this feedback loop of satisfying yourself. Just keep working on catching yourself in the moment. Oh, and by the way, don't litter. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for your weekly dose of dynamic science.